So hello and welcome. On behalf of the Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, I would like to welcome you to the inaugural induction of the College of DuPage Athletic Hall of Fame Class of 2019. My name is Jane Batchev, Chair of the Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, and I am so thrilled to be with you tonight. Throughout the many years of coaching track and field, I have often, and this happened usually at, when we had a storm delay, and I found myself wandering around the halls of athletic buildings, but I found myself admiring the many colleges and university walls of athletic facilities lined with pictures and biographies of their great athletes and coaches and their support staff. And then in 2014, I had the humbling experience to be inducted into my high school's Hall of Fame. I, I think I was a pretty decent uh, high school athlete, but more importantly, I think I was inducted because of the coaching success I had at the College of DuPage. And so it got me thinking, we need to honor our athletic past at the College of DuPage. When I was the head track coach, Nicolette probably can attest to this, when I was the head track coach at the College of DuPage, I often tried to inspire my athletes during our weekly team meetings, and one of my favorite themes of my lectures was explaining about our rich athletic history at the College of DuPage and about their place in the chain of that history. I would tell the athletes about creating and maintaining a winning tradition based on the shoulders of those who had come before them. Tonight, we are so honored to celebrate six of these legends who were instrumental in our great athletic history at the College of DuPage. So how did we get this started? Three years ago, the Athletic Hall of Fame Committee was formed, and a mission statement was created. The committee determined three categories of recognition and then approved the criteria for each of the categories. The three categories are female athlete, male athlete, and coach athletic support staff. The mission statement and the criteria are all included in your program tonight if you'd like to read them. From there, nominations were sought by reaching out to current and former coaches, the college community and the community at large, and we had nominations from all those areas. By the way, future nominations are welcome, so if anybody's out there and wanting to nominate somebody, we would love that. Uh, check out either our athletic website for nominations, or I even brought a couple forms with me tonight. Finally, this fall, with the encouragement and support of Greg McVeigh, the new athletic director, inductees were selected and the plans for our first induction ceremony were able to get off the ground. And I wanna publicly thank Greg McVeigh for making this a priority to support. The six inductees will be receiving tonight a glass inscribed award displayed over here, uh, a polo shirt with Athletic Hall of Fame monogrammed on it. And we will, we will be putting up a plaque with their picture and biography of their athletic achievements up at the PE Athletic Building in the next couple of weeks. We also have, for each person attending tonight, if you haven't noticed, we have an Athletic Hall of Fame glass at your place setting for each of you who are attending tonight to take home as our thank you for attending the first induction ceremony. I would like to thank the efforts, dedication, and commitment of our Athletic Hall of Fame committee. Please, committee, stand when I read your name and remain standing. Ron Otteson. Al Zamsky. Don Kloss. Earl Reed. Matt Foster, and Mark Reinhiller. Please give them a round of applause. As you can see, I'm, I'm surrounded by great men. <laughs> we also had the support from the Alumni Foundation Office, and I would like to thank Ellen Farrow, please stand, from the Alumni Relations Manager, and Earl Dowling, Vice President of Institutional Advancement, for their help and support. Thank you both. You. 
we have had amazing support from the College of DuPage administration, including Provost Dr. Mark Curtis Chavez. Thank you, Dr. Chavez. <laughs> Assistant Provost for Student Affairs, Dr. Diana Del Rosario. Thank you. And I want to thank the staff of the MAC who assisted with all of our ticket sales and introduced Diana Martinez, director of the Mackinac, Ar Mackinac Arts Center. Thank you very much for your support. We have some outstanding audio visuals uh, that you're going to see as part of our celebration tonight. And I would like to thank Kevin Willman, please stand Kevin, and his staff, Joe, Josh, and Kyle, for their amazing work and their talent and their time. Lastly, I wanna thank three people that have been instrumental in this ceremony. First, Bonnie Buckley, I know she's not here tonight. She is uh, from the Doubletree Hilton and the events coordinator and she is absolutely amazing to work with. I think she needs a raise, she works so hard. Um, secondly, uh, Beverly Smith, our admi athletic administrative assistant. Beverly, please stand. Beverly does an outstanding job with everything from the room setup. She helped me with the room. Uh, and Lainey, please stand as well. Lainey Engel. They both helped me with the room setup and, and Beverly with the flowers and also organizing and paying the bills. So thank you. You are a blessing, Beverly. Thank you. Lastly, I have one person who has been my right hand man uh, in organizing this ceremony. He also helped in publicizing the Hall of Fame and the um, uh, tonight's celebration as well. Uh, he also worked with Kevin and his staff for our video, and he will be our fearless MC tonight, Mark Reinhiller. <laughs> Mark, I appreciate all your hard work, your effort, and your time, and I really thank you. So now it is my honor and privilege to welcome tonight a gentleman who just about a week ago was selected as our new president of the College of DuPage. We are overjoyed to have you lead the college and excited about our future together. It is an honor to have uh, him with us tonight and I'd like to introduce Dr. Brian Caputo. I am very pleased to be with you here on this proud occasion. It's wonderful to celebrate the rich history of College of DuPage Athletics and to welcome the inaugural class of inductees into the College of DuPage Hall of Fame. For more than 50 years, College of DuPage has provided transformative experiences for student athletes, whether it was winning the Red Grange Bowl, achieving a national championship title in a variety of sports, or involving students who achieve a 3.0 or higher GPA in the Football Champions Club. At College of DuPage, we believe in student success and encourage all of our student athletes to leverage their talents both on and off the field in pursuit of their educational goals. Since coming to the College of DuPage, I will say I've witnessed quite a few um, athletic competitions. Um, as I've gotten to know the players, I have gained an understanding of how much our student athletes sacrifice to compete in athletics. Participation in intercollegiate athletics requires dedication, hard work, and time. Student athletes must balance, balance practice, game, and associated travel demands and the demands of academics, classes, and studying. Many must also support themselves. Some have families of their own. This has caused me to see the student athletes as arguably the hardest working students on campus. Given my background, I have a special appreciation for athletics. Uh, some of you may know my undergraduate degree is from the United States Military Academy at West Point. West Point takes athletics very seriously. In fact, Douglas MacArthur established the theme, 
every cadet an athlete when he was superintendent at the academy. Why would he posit such, such a notion? Of course, ath athletics serves to build physical prowess and stamina, but also athletics teach lessons of teamwork and develop the participants into well-rounded individuals. Every cadet, cadet at, the, at the academy must participate in either intercollegiate athletics or intramural athletics. I was not an intercollegiate athlete, rather I found myself playing football and wrestling at, at the intramural level. In addition, we were required to take courses in swimming, gymnastics, wrestling, and boxing. Indeed, I believe these experiences made me a more well-rounded individual, and the habits of fitness have stayed with me to the current day. If I could, I would require all COD students to participate in athletics for the lessons that it teaches. However, if I tried that, I think I would have the dubious distinction of being the shortest lived College of DuPage president. <laughs> Tonight though, we honor COD athletes, coaches, and staff members who helped bring distinction to the college and the community at large. I am pleased to acknowledge this outstanding 2019 inaugural class, which includes the legendary Don Kloss, who coached the Chaparral's men's basketball team for over 35 incredible seasons. Over the past few months, as I've gotten to know Don, I have come to understand why he is so beloved by this college community. The visionary Hal Mackinich, our former COD president, who is credited for being directly responsible for spearheading the construction of the PE and Recreational Center. I will add that Dr. Mackinich has begun to serve as a bit of a coach for me in the leadership realm. Track and field champion Nicolette Wright, who, not who was not only an outstanding athlete at the college, but was also a two-time competitor on the popular TV show, American Ninja Warrior. Track and field, track and field star, Tom Puxtis, Tom Puxtis was a member of two Olympic teams and a six-time champion. We are proud to say it all started here at the College of DuPage. Paul Spicer was also an, has a claim uh, to national fame as a defensive end in the National Football League for 11 seasons for various teams. While at COD, he was an All-American football star. And Allison Ittersagen, was a two-time women's basketball All-American All -American guard and tennis champion at the college. We recognize these outstanding individuals tonight, not only for the examples they set at the college, but also for the legacy they have provided as inspiration to future students. On behalf of the College of DuPage, I congratulate each of you on this momentous occasion and welcome you into the college's athletic hall of fame. Thank you all for your efforts to advance athletics at our institution. Thank Thanks. you. Welcome to our inaugural Chaparral Hall of Fame ceremony. Before I begin, I do believe that uh, the fine staff here at the Double Tree need a fine round of applause for the wonderful meal we had tonight and their gracious hospitality. Thank you very much for being able to do a, a tremendous job tonight. Uh, as noted before, I am Mark Reinhiller, and since mid-November of this past year, I have served as the college's sports information coordinator. More than 50 years of athletics have taken place at COD, and it's been incredibly enjoyable uh, for me, uncovering and understanding the vast amount of athletic history that exists here at COD. Unquestionably, our inaugural class of chaparrales sets itself apart from the pack in terms of leadership, individual, and team success. From the national championship trophies to those who used their athletic ability and competed at their sport's highest levels, there is little question that athletics matter to each one of our Hall of Famers and to all of us who are here tonight. We look forward to their stories, but let's begin with the reason why we are gathered here tonight. It's time. 
After more than 50 years of athletics at College of DuPage, the Chaparrales honor their inaugural Athletic Hall of Fame class with its induction ceremony tonight. The inductees include two two-sport champions, a two-time Olympian, a Super Bowl champion, a record-setting coach, and a former president who helped lay the foundation for the successes that continue today for Chaparral student athletes. Tonight, we recognize Allie Kloss Ittersagen, Nicolette Wright, Tom Puxtis, Paul Spicer, Don Kloss, and Dr. Harold D. Mackinich, as COD creates a new chapter in its voluminous athletic history with its inaugural Hall of Fame class. Athletics have played a prestigious role in the college's reputation and image since COD opened its doors in 1967. The Chaparrales have won 32 national championships in 11 different sports at the junior college level. And for six straight years this century, from 2004 to 2009, COD was recognized as the top non-scholarship junior college program based on success in championship competition across all sports by the National Alliance of Two-Year College Athletic Administrators. Countless chaparrales have earned All-American honors in all sports, as did each of tonight's individual Hall of Famers and each moved on to four-year schools and again, distinguished themselves with their athletic ability. Tonight, we honor the inaugural class in the 52-year history of athletics at College of DuPage, and our honorees are most deserving of that status. Ladies and gentlemen, our first honoree spent 35 years at the helm of the Chaparral's men's basketball program. And over those years, the Chaparral's ranked among the very best in the National Junior College Athletic Association, capped by the 2002 National Championship squad. Join me now for a look at Don Kloss. Don Kloss coached the Chaparrales for 35 seasons, owning a near 70% winning percentage with a record of 743 wins and 382 losses. He led the Chaps to 12 N4C conference titles, eight sectional titles, and seven Region 4 titles. Seven of his teams reached the national tournament, and he capped his career with his 2002 National Championship squad. He was the 2001-2002 National Coach of the Year and is a member of the National Junior College Athletic Association Hall of Fame, the Illinois Coaches Hall of Fame, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville Hall of Fame. He finished his career ranked number one in NJCAA history in D3 and Illinois Junior College victories. The COD basketball floor is named Kloss Court in his honor. Please join me in welcoming former COD Director of Athletics, Dr. Ralph Miller, who will introduce our first honoree, Don Kloss. So let's just talk, start talking a little bit about Don Kloss, okay? Obviously, he's a former basketball coach. You saw what his record is, so I can tear that stuff up. All right. Uh, he was one of the things that, aside from being a wonderful coach, he's an outstanding, was an outstanding faculty member. Just wonderful person. And he also did an unbelievable job running our fitness lab. And it's something, the accomplishments he did that to be able to improve the level, increase the participation and so forth, were something that was just amazing. He did an absolutely wonderful job at that. He was an excellent high school athlete where he played football, basketball, baseball, and ran track. Uh, he graduated from University of Wisconsin, Platteville, with a major in English. Okay, he's a great writer also, by the way. Uh, and uh, he played basketball there, and then had a unique opportunity to become a graduate assistant at the University of Kentucky under legendary coach Adolf Rupp and his successor, Joe B. Hall. From there, he went on to become uh, the head basketball coach at Penn State McKeesport, 
And then after that, he went to the University of Wisconsin at Richland, and then College of DuPage was so lucky to have him arrive here, I believe it was 1978. And he has done an absolutely wonderful job since he has been here. Uh, I'll scratch all about his records because we talked about that. Did he mention you coached 13 All-Americans on that, Don? I don't remember, but okay, he has coached 13 All-Americans. Uh, he has really created an environment within the College of DuPage basketball community. And it can be shown by the support that he received from his assistant coaches, the last table back there, all people that have worked with him here supporting him because of the true sincere nature of what Don's efforts were to be able to develop great basketball teams. But Don is much more than just a coach. He's a family person, okay? College of Page basketball is a class family operation. His wife, Peggy, okay, coached the cheerleaders. His, his kids, Ben, Casey, and Allie were either ball boys or ball girl, all right? You know, I, I used to coach college basketball before I came to the College of DuPage. All I did is see these little kids running around and they were having a great time. And, uh, again, his wife doing some things. I know when we, uh, the College of DuPage hosted the national tournament for, for basketball, our region tournament for basketball. It was something Peggy's there bringing, you know, bringing uh, cupcakes and donuts and everything else to be able. It was truly a family operation. And, Peggy, uh, you deserve part of this award also. So maybe we can scratch that out there for you. So. And, and Casey and uh, Allie were great athletes here. Casey, you know, uh, you not only were a great player here in basketball, I know your major sport was football, but you were a great team leader. And that's something that is, is, is amazing to me. And Allie, you were a tremendous competitor. You know, it's just something you, you did not know how to lose. And to me, that's something. And Allie went on to play uh, Division I basketball. And congratulations to you and Ben who is not here, unfortunately, just an absolutely wonderful person. He worked in the athletic department, and he was like my right-hand person. And I, if I gave Ben something to do, it was done at the highest level. Just an absolutely wonderful thing, which is a tribute to both Don and Peggy for exactly how great people they are. Uh, they're also wonderful grandparents. Got a lot of grandkids involved in supporting their, their grandkids and, their ki and their, also their kids and their spouses. Uh, Don coaches the kids to try and get them to be better in their sports. You know, they, Don and Peggy are very, very involved with their church. They teach religious classes to young kids, something that just talks about exactly how good a people they are. Don was a great teacher also, and this is something that, that I, I just feel is important. He was honored as the outstanding teacher at the College of DuPage one year. And I really believe that he feels as good about that as he does about many of the other basketball awards that he has received. And generally, and this is, and I've said this already, but I'll re reinforce it. There weren't any of our coaches that, that sacrificed their teaching to be able to enhance their coaching. They were both quality teachers and quality coaches. Uh, his specialty was golf. And he taught golf to many students and many faculty and staff members. And it was their first introduction to game. And, and many, many people went to his classes to be able to learn how to play. Uh, he also ran the fitness lab. And let me, say, let me take that back. He took ownership for the fitness lab, and I think there's a difference. It wasn't a job. It was a passion for him. And it was something that he built the uh, uh, the. Uh, participation level from around 500 to well over a thousand people and it was just done in a first-class way and Don Don was here at 5 30 6 o'clock in the morning opening the place up and was just very very involved and supportive of that and and I, I truly believe he's just a proud of what happened in the fitness lab as he did what happened on the basketball court he, he is a he has great character he's very very loyal He's very, very helpful. He lives with purpose, which is something that I really believe in. As I said, he was an excellent you know, English major. He's an excellent writer. He's an excellent singer. He he's, uh, just does many, many things way above what the average person would do. And most importantly, he's a wonderful person and someone that I can honestly call one of my best friends in this world. And without further ado, I would like to introduce to you 
the first inductee into the College of DuPage Athletics Hall of Fame, Coach Don Kless. Well, thanks, Ralph. Thank you so much. That was nice. Uh, <clears throat> what he said was my speech, so thank you. <laughs> Ralph and I have been great friends, and we, were, we competed, as he mentioned, and we had some great battles over the years. And at the end of the games, win or lose, we were all shaking hands and giving each other a hug. I mean, we were great friends, and, and we appreciated each other's ability to coach. And so that always carried on. And then when he became the athletic director at DuPage, I was very excited because I knew he'd do a great job. So thank you so much. Dr. Mackinich, Dr. Caputo, the Hall of Fame committee, especially Jane Vatcheff, who's done a wonderful job with this, the inductees, COD administration, family, guests, and friends. Thanks for coming. This is really a special thing for me. And of course, it's, it's singularly very important to me because you know I'm getting honored. But the most important thing is I get to go into this with my daughter. And that makes it really, really special. And so uh, th that has really filled my heart and made it very exciting for me. Now, I stand here before you only because of the grace of God and my faith in God. He's, God has directed my life. He's been the center of my life as long as I can remember. And that has never changed. And it hasn't changed whether I was in basketball or family or whatever, my, whatever the situation was, that's what I did. Now, I got to this point in my career because I had so many wonderful people that helped me. My support has been wonderful. And before I actually go on to that, and I know Ralph has inter introduced my family, but I'd like them to stand. Peggy, my wife, will be married 50 years this year. And <clears throat> I just want to say Peggy is the best coach's wife that there is out there. But I have to share something with you. Excuse me, Peg. Stand up. She's been so supportive, but about, I don't know what, it was a few years ago, I was getting ready to give a speech at a banquet, and I had my notes on the table. She took them, and she put other notes there. And when I got up to speak at the banquet, what? <laughs> What's going on? And so she pulled a good trick on me. It was very good. Thanks, Peg. Anyway, great support. My son Casey and his wife Kara and their three kids, Kate, Charlie, and Tommy, please stand up. And <laughs> Allie and Brian, and Brooke and Anna, Blake, Chase, and Luke, if you please stand. Thank you so much. Ralph mentioned that Casey played for me and that was one of the most fun years of my coaching career. He, he was our best player. He's MVP, MVP of the uh, tournament, re the region tournament, and he led us to the nationals. And I, I really felt in my heart we had a chance to win it, but he got hurt. And he, he gave it everything he had to try to be able to play. But he, had, he got us there, and we were, I was always very appreciative of it. But I also just, I often think of, of uh, his time playing for me, which was so special. And I could go into many stories, I won't, but uh, just thanks, Case, that was really wonderful. And I gotta tell you, my kids, I, I coached in, in grade school at St. Petronelle, and I, I was talking to Tom Puxtis, I don't ever remember not being tired. Because I'd coach my ki I'd be at COD from six to six, I'd get home, have a little bite to eat, and then I'd, we'd go practice basketball from seven to 8.30. And when it was all over, I thought, wow, this was, this was so, so wonderful for me. I'll never forget it. And I often bring it up to my kids, but, yeah, yeah, okay, Dad. <laughs> but it, for me, it was, it was really the best, and, and I loved it. So the, the, one of the reasons I'm also here, the, the CO minist COD administration it really was unbelievable. Dr. Mackinich was my president 
for about half of my career and was so pro-athletics and so supportive, um, I was a very lucky man to have Dr. Mackinich right there, and that, that was great. Our athletic directors, we had Dr. Miller, we had Dr. Reed. I've, I've had some great athletic directors that, I mean, were right there, that helped me every step of the way, and you can't do it alone. You've got to have people there to help you, and I always had that, and I appreciate that. I always thought in my heart uh, that COD allowed me to live my dreams. I never thought of it as a job. For me, it was a way of life. I don't ever remember one day getting up and, gee, I wish I, wish I didn't have to go in. I, I was never, that's never how it was with me. I was always wanting to go and, and do the best that I could that day. So COD has been wonderful for me. Um, I'm glad they paid me, you know, but it wasn't like a job. <clears throat> I also just, I've had some great, I mean some great assistant coaches. Scott Wager, would you please stand? Scott was, I was at COD 35 years. Scott probably, I mean, he was there longer than I was. And he was my right-hand man, did so much for me. I could not have had anywhere near the success in this program without Scott Wager. So thank you so much, Scott. Bob Hoppenstedt, another assistant. He was with me 12 years. Where's Bob? Oh, well, there he's in the back. I had to deal with Bob because he was a psychologist. And uh, often I hear, why? Why are you doing this? But he was a great assistant coach. We had a great time, and it was wonderful. Charles Jerkus, who played for me. And he was an excellent player, as tough as they come. And he also coached with me for over 20 years. And I loved having him around. He, he had to do it on a part-time basis because he had his other job. But he was wonderful and he had such a good basketball mind. He had so many good ideas and the way he helped handle kids and all that, it was, it was, it was just a wonderful thing. And thank you for that, Charles. Matt Nadelhofer coached with me, was assistant. And Matt helped us get to a national, win the national uh, title in 2002. Matt also played for me and was the finest passer that I've ever coached. He was outstanding. And, and he had a great basketball mind as well. In fact, at halftime of games, and it, there were more than that, but at halftime of games, he was always trying to get in with the coaches to try to give us his ideas of what we should do in the second half. And it was, it was great. And quite often, you know, I mean, very often he was right. So thank you for all the, uh, the time and effort and everything you've given me, you assistant coaches. Have I, oh, Ryan Connell. I forgot him. He was with me a couple years. Thanks, Ryan. He's now the women's softball coach at College of DuPage. Does a great job. Ryan was with me a couple years. And the same thing, great effort. Just uh, gave me everything he had. Now, the, all of these assistant coaches had one thing in common. A couple things. First of all, they picked on me. When we got together after the games, there were, when there was laughing and joker, jokes, it was, it was on me. And secondly, all of them, all of them said, why are you doing this? Why don't you do this? And they all thought, if he would just if this coach would just follow more of what we have to say, he'd have a whole lot more wins. So, <laughs> but it was, we had a great time with all of them. It was a, a wonderful thing with them, and thank you. Couldn't do it without them. And of course, in this, you can't do it without great players. I was a pretty good recruiter. I had a pretty good line. Even though we didn't have scholarships, I got my share of great players. And i get these kids, and they'd come into the program, and they would play together. They would play great defense. They knew what a good shot was. They took care of the ball. They would do all the things that you have to do to have a chance to win. And they did that. They sacrificed 
themselves because they knew the team was the most important thing. I often told them, I says, we start each year with a finger. And what I want to become, I want this team to become a fist. And almost all of my teams became the fist. And the really, really good ones were double fisted. We were so together. We did everything together. They understood how to win. They were so competitive. And another thing about my players, I wanted to give them ownership. I wanted them to feel that this is their offense, this is their defense, and in actuality it was. I could put it in, but it became theirs, and they acted like it was theirs. They were insulting when something didn't go well. And I, all, I, just, I often talked about this line, we're going to meet teams that are quicker, bigger, stronger, faster. And I said, do you think we're going to do that during the season? And of course they all said yes. I said, never do I want to hear or see anyone that's smarter? And do you know, in 35 years of coaching at College DuPage, I don't know if we ever met, played against a team that was smarter than the College DuPage team. That's the kind of player I had. I mean, they, the smarts that they had was, was incredible. And that's what gave us the double fist, or at least the fist. And they knew how to win. They knew how to play together. And it's, it's just something that, as a coach, you, you, I have all these ideas and what to do and all that, but it's the kids you get, and it's the kids that you have to adjust to. I didn't recruit athletes that would fit my system. I recruited the best kids I could and then made adjustments. And when people think of the College of DuPage and, our, for example, our defense, they think, well, you know, Clausen is 1-3-1 defense and all that. We, we're, I hope they felt that. We had so much more than that. My, the defensive philosophy was about like a baseball pitcher. If you have one pitch, you're going to get hit. My philosophy defensively, 1-3-1, one, one, well, man-to-man -man first of all, 1-3-1 one, one defense, matchup zone, box and one. We used them all. We used a box and one at the national tournament to win. And, and so and I couldn't do this without great players and really smart players. And that's what they were. I thought they had confidence when games were close. And there was one year we had 24 wins. We won 17 games by five points or less. That's players. That's players knowing what to do and how to do it. And that, that happened all the time. We started each year with a contract because there was nothing more important to me than this. They had to sign an education contract. When I met with each kid before the season started, I put the paper in front. This is the education contract you have to sign, and you're going to follow it. And the very, there were 25 items. The top one was, you're here for an education. Don't ever forget that. You're here for an education. We ran great checks. We did all kinds of things to make sure that that happened. And I got to tell you, there were a couple times during my career that I had to dismiss a kid because he wasn't going to class enough. It's, I wanted every day. In fact, it often happened in practice. We'd always gather to begin with, all right, how many kids went to, uh, made class today? And our, our, I didn't say it like this. How many kids missed a class? Well, in the early going, there'd be one or two guys that would raise their hand. Then I'd make them do push-ups. Don't miss classes. And they'd, do, they'd have to do push-ups right there. After a little while, when I'd ask, how many missed classes? Nobody raised their hand. <laughs> they knew that I was going to always grade check and make sure they were there. And that, there was nothing more important to me than that because they weren't going to make a living in basketball. I wanted them to take that education and move forward and be the best they could be with that. The other thing about coaching at College DuPage, uh, I was often asked this, I mean, you've been here so long, what, what's the drive? It was so fun for me every single year. Every year was so different. Half my team was different. I'd get kids back, but I had new kids coming in. And I loved putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And that was always fun. And I had help from coaches, I had help from my players. It was never a one thing, 
a one-man job. We had help from everybody. And it, it just made it very special to me. I, don't, I think there was one time in my career that I wanted the season over. That's, and that's 43 years as a head junior college coach. Just one. And, and you know why I wanted it over? Because kids, I didn't think they, they loved each other enough. I didn't think they were together enough. We won. We won 28 games that year. That wasn't a problem. But I didn't feel that comfort in my, that peace within me. And so the only time in my career I, I felt that. I told them about it. They had to know. Now, the priorities in my life, as I kind of mentioned, have always been my faith, my family, and then my career. That was the, that's how I started my career. That's how I ended my career. And that did not change. And I always felt that, that I mean, I, I tried to pass that on to players. We prayed before games. And do you know what? I think if, when I would say that, some people might think, well, you prayed to win. Not once did we ever pray to win the game. We, said a, we gathered together, held hands, and said a little prayer to protect us and allow us to play our best. That's what we prayed for. Do you think God cares about who wins or loses on a basketball court? I never did. But we wanted to give our very best, and that, that's what our prayer was. We ended up each practice and each after every game, no matter what the situation was, we got together, put our hands in, and this is how I'm going to end my talk. We said this, work hard, play fair, and serve God. We ended every practice, we ended every game that, and I, I have to say over the years, I've had kids come back that, that I see every now and then, and they always bring that part up. It was, it was just, it was fun playing at College of DuPage, and it was a good experience for me. Thank you. Thank you, Don, and congratulations. Dr. Harold McIninch served two stints as College of DuPage president, and the athletic department benefited greatly during his tenure. Dr. McInish was responsible for the construction of the Physical Education and Recreation Center and was vital in the hiring and support of COD's many Hall of Fame coaches. Join me as we look back at Dr. Harold McInish. Dr. Harold D. McIninch was responsible for the construction of the Physical Education and Recreation Center and was vital in the hiring and support of COD's many Hall of Fame coaches. He was an extremely strong supporter of the intercollegiate athletic programs and advocated the mission of COD Athletics. He's been a constant promoter of the athletics brand and their successes throughout DuPage County, the state, and the nation. COD's athletic program and storied history of success is due in large part to his passion, commitment, vision, and support. Join me again in welcoming Dr. Miller, who will introduce our second honoree, Dr. Harold McAninch. Hal has been president, uh, full-time president of three community colleges, uh, first one was in Jackson, Michigan, Jackson Community College. Then he went to the uh, Joliet Junior College, was there for seven years. And then we were so fortunate, I believe it was 1978, where he became the president of the College of DuPage. Uh, he's been an interim president uh, at the College of DuPage. He's also been the, a president of one of the Baltimore Community Colleges and also was an interim chancellor for the Baltimore Community Colleges. Uh, he, had, he received his bachelor's degree from uh, Southwest Missouri State. He has two master's degrees, one from University of Arkansas, one from Loyola University, and he has his doctorate from the University of Missouri at Columbia. At one point early in his career, he was nominated to be the, the a, uh, outstanding speech teacher in the Midwest. So obviously Hal was an articulate individual in his early days and continued on to, to do that. 
He served in so many capacities, both on an international, national, and state level, that it just uh, blows my mind when I'm going to share with you some of those right now. He was chairman of the Council of North Central Colleges and Junior Colleges. He was the chair and the vice president of the Illinois Council of Public Community Colleges. He was a member and chair of the Commission of Governmental uh, Affairs of the American uh, Colleges and Junior Colleges, which is the AAJCJC. He was president of the President's Academy uh, at the AACJC. He was on the board of directors of the AACJC. He was the chairman of the uh, board of directors of the AAJC. I, I, you got it. I'm going to say, saying this. I'm starting to run my words together. That's for sure. Uh, he was also on the national advisory panel for the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. He was the, a commissioner on the Commission for Institutions of Higher Education. He was named the Outstanding Communicator for, by the National Council of Community Relations. And this one is probably the neatest of all, okay? He was the National Blue Chip Leader Award winner as one of the top 50 transformational leaders in American education, which is something to be very, very proud of. And it doesn't surprise me in the least that you got that particular award. Let's talk a little bit about some of the COD things that he accomplished. Aside from building, uh, help, uh, leading the way and building the PE and Community Recreation Center, he uh, uh, also was involved in uh, the building and construction of our Student Resource Center, of our uh, Seton Computer Center, and of the uh, Mackinac Arts Center, which obviously is named for him, and rightly so. He has provided phenomenal growth where at one point, and I think it was during uh, the mid-90s, okay, the uh, uh, College of Page uh, recorded a fantastic enrollment of 36,322 students, which is just an absolute, you know, at the time I believe it was larger than the University of Illinois enrollment. Uh, with respect to COD athletics, uh, he was really a leader in the N4C conference, which is the conference we participated in. He served as the president uh, of the commissioners for many, time, many times during his uh, tenure at COD. Uh, he brought great integrity to our conference and really focused and stressed the idea of the, the true student athlete, the, the athlete that obviously participated, but somebody who was a very conscientious student. He was a very big supporter of community college and junior college athletics. Let me share with you a couple of just examples of uh, Hal's commitment to our athletic program. Uh, think about this. Uh, for many years, he was the spotter for Ted Tilton, who was the provost at the time. Ted was the announcer, and Hal was the spotter, okay? And when I was thinking, Hal, given the awards you had for you know, being a speech teacher, we probably should have reversed those roles. But you know, that was one thing, unbelievable amount of time and, and, and that he spent in contributions to our very, very successful football program. He was quietly behind the improvement of our, our facilities. I can remember, this was Thanksgiving of 1993. I remember it vividly. Uh, it was a, a board meeting on Monday, and they approved a $330,000 uh, amount of money to be able to construct some new facilities and remodel some facilities to be able to uh, increase the quality of our fitness lab and our strength complex. That, that was very, very nice. Well, on Hale's probably not, doesn't even remember this. And uh, Tuesday, I get a call from Ken Colbert, who was the vice president in charge of finance, he said, Hal said that with this new facility, you probably should buy some new equipment. So he said, I just put 70 grand more in your budget to buy equipment. Then on Wednesday, Dave Boffman, who was the Dean of Natural Sciences, who we reported to for uh, physical education, okay, he said, Ralph, you know, uh, the administration feels that, you know, you've got a new facility, we need to be able to have great equipment in that facility. I'm gonna add $69,000 to your budget. And all this without asking. And there's no doubt in my mind where the initiative started. It was right there with Dr. Hal Mackinich. Let me also suggest a couple other things that are just above and beyond what a normal president would do. 
Uh, one of the things before I became the director of athletics, I, my good friend at the time, Herb Salberg, who was the athletic director, said, I asked him, what are the concerns? And he had mentioned national travel. And he said, because our teams uh, have been so successful, many of them are going to uh, travel for national competition. It could be anywhere in the country. And he said, it's extremely difficult to budget for that. And again, without asking, Hal created an auxiliary account, where, which came from a fund, fund generating account, to be able to cover all national travel for our athletic teams. And it was something that just, it just provided uh, great security for us. We weren't nickel and diming things, we were doing things the right way and we're providing a wonderful experience for our students. I know one year uh, that I was there, we had 18 teams, 13 of the teams qualified for national tournaments and five won national championships. And Hal, that's something that it, it really was a valuable thing to both our staff and myself because it was something that we, we just did not have to be concerned about how much money we spent. And again, we weren't, we weren't trying to spend a lot of money, we wanna spend what was appropriate, but again, not to have, to have to worry about that. And when you have 13 teams going to a national tournament during a year, it's, it's very, very challenging to come up with the idea in your mind a year or so ahead of time that you're gonna have 13 teams, and you're gonna have this cost and that cost. And lastly, one other thing that I wanted to share um, with you, and I think was extremely important to the success of our coaches. Our coaches were just fantastic people, and as I said before, very good teachers. But Hal was very, very supportive of the concept of release time. And what that was is our, our, our coaches that would be fulfilling a role as a coach, and they were also teaching, they would receive X number of uh, hours or X number of percentage toward uh, their full-time salary, where they might be one-third coaching and two-thirds being a teacher. And that really provided for additional longevity, because I, I know for a fact, and as a former coach and athletic director, you know, we could be traveling, get home at 12, and as athletic director at another community college, I had to be in the door at eight o'clock. And that may, when you're young, that may seem fun and everything else, but when you get a little bit older, it gets, gets to be considerably more challenging. And it's something that, Hal, it's something that I, I remember in our interview, you asked me what my opinion was, I guess I gave you the right answer because you did hire me, but, it, but it's something that, uh, again, that, that added so much to the energy that our coaches had to both provide to their students in their classes, but also to their athletic teams. And Don, thank you for not taking my notes too. Okay, many, many of you sitting in this room who have been part of the College of DuPage athletic uh, uh, program have had many similar experiences to the four that I just mentioned. I encourage you afterwards, after the ceremony is over, to you share with some of those with Hal. I'd very much like to welcome our former boss, our friend, and the best community college president in the history of the state of Illinois, Dr. Hal Mackinich. Thank you, Ralph. And, and I want to thank all of you here for allowing me to be a part of this. Uh, I feel very humble. I'm not an athlete I, at all. <clears throat> in fact, uh, I was, uh, when I graduated from high school, I weighed 121 pounds, was five foot six and a half inches tall, <laughs> and 16 years old, so there was no way in the world I was an athlete. I, uh, I want to thank uh, Jane and the committee. I think that they did a, a wonderful job of putting all this together, and I know that was not easy, and uh, they deserve your applause and approbation. Thank you very much. <laughs> I also want to uh, thank uh, my wife, Carol, for putting up with me, being a college president and oftentimes not being home a lot. Uh, and uh, she put up with it for, what, 64 years this year? Yeah. 63, oh, 63, yeah, it only feels like 64. <laughs> uh, the, uh, and also, uh, I want to introduce uh, my son, 
Mike and his wife Tina. Stand up, be recognized there. I was, I wasn't an athlete, but Mike was, and Mike still holds two records here at the college. Uh, the 500 meter indoor, uh, which will last forever so we don't have indoor track anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the 400 meter outdoor hurdles. So, and he, and he went down to Georgia and ran hurdles there. So he did a great job. My daughter, Michelle, and her husband, Joe. Stand up, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle was not an athlete, but she was very active in uh, theater and, uh, and forensic events, and she, uh, she was really quite good at it. I, when we were at Joliet, I acted in a show with Michelle. Uh, I think the show was Dracula, and uh, she outshone me. No end, really. It was it was amazing, and it was also a great experience to be able to act with her in a show. Um, I feel very humble about being a part of this, but because this group of people of Coach Klaus, uh, with a record that is unmatched, uh, four wonderful athletes uh, that. It's just wonderful to have that kind of student at the College of DuPage, not only as an athlete, but as wonderful people that turned into great human beings. And I'm very, very happy that we've had that kind of student athlete at the college. I was not, although not an athlete myself, I was very supportive of athletics because I think it does so much for students. Uh, when I came to the college, and we, first year we were working with the board, and I, I told the board, I said, you know, if you raise your taxes that we have already voted here, the people have voted, if you just raise them up, and save that money, then you could build some buildings and not owe any bonds for it. And they said, wow, that sounds okay, so why don't we go ahead and do that? And I, they said, well, what would be the first building you'd build? And I think I surprised them by saying, an athletic facility. And they knew that I was a speech major, so they couldn't quite figure out why I came up with athletics. Well, some of you remember the athletic facility that we were working in in those days. And we needed an athletic facility very, very badly. And the board went along with it. And they came up with a wonderful program. Um, I always thought that a student coming to a college needed an identity point to identify with, a, a program, a faculty member, a coach that would help them focus and move toward success. And if they had that identity point, they were more, much more likely to stay in school and succeed. And not only did I feel that athletics did that, but also music, uh, theater, uh, student government, other programs that students could identify with, and coaches that they could identify with. And we were very, very fortunate at the College of DuPage to have some of the best coaches in the world. And I really believe that. I don't know of a coach that we had that I wouldn't want my son or daughter to play for. They were all that kind of coach. The coach that would take a student where that student was and help them succeed. And athletics and activities 
help students to identify, focus, and learn the discipline that it took to succeed. And so I always felt that if we could have the right kinds of coaches, faculty, and staff that could relate to students and help them identify with the program, then we would be on the right track. And we had that kind of thing. My son had one of the greatest coaches possible in a track coach, Ron Otteson over here. Stand up, Ron, be recognized. Uh -huh. So that is what my feeling was that we always had to have that kind of program that could welcome students into the college, give them an identity point, and then work with them to succeed. And we were lucky enough to do that. I want to uh, thank all of you. I thank the, the committee for being kind enough to put me in this group of, of such great people. And uh, I want to say that I really, I have been probably one of the luckiest people in the world in that I was fortunate enough to come to the College of DuPage and find a fantastic staff and faculty and coaches and administrators to work with. And I really have to thank the college and all of you that I've worked with for helping me to help succeed along the way. Thank you. Our next honoree is a champion in every sense of the word. Nicolet Wright earned national championships both as a team member and for her individual talent. A nine-time All-American, she won three individual championships and ran on four title-winning relays while helping the Chaps win the 2001 and 2002 Women's Track and Field Championships. And in basketball, Nicolette helped the Chaps to the 2002 National Championship team. Please join me now as we take a look at Nicolette Wright. Nicolette Wright led the Chaparrales to consecutive team national championships in track and field, playing a remarkable role in her two seasons. She won individual national championships in the 400 meter hurdles and triple jump, and ran legs on national championship 4x400 and 4x800 relays in 2001. In 2002, she repeated in the 400 hurdles and in the 4x800 relay. Wright also helped her 2002 4x100 relay win a national title. All told, she won three individual national championships and was a member of four relay title teams. She was a nine-time All-American and went on to compete at Robert Morris University. She also played an instrumental role on the Chaparral's 2002 NJCAA National Championship basketball squad. Join me in welcoming former track and field head coach Jane Vachev, who will introduce our third honoree tonight, Nicolette Wright. Nicolette Wright is the daughter of Al and Chris Wright and came to College of DuPage from Oak Park River Forest High School. As you can tell from the video, Nicolette was an amazing athlete at the national level. In 2001 on the track team, as you heard at the national meet, she won two individual events and two relays, but she also placed seventh in the 100 meter high hurdles. Then in 2002, she was a total force of athleticism, winning again the 400 hurdles and part of a champion four by 100 relay that set a new national record that lasted for over 10 years. She also was part of the winning 4x800 relay that set a new national record that lasts uh, still today. Um, what you may not know is that at the same meet, at the same national meet, Nicolette also placed second in the open 400, second in the pole vault, 
coached by Ron Addison, by the way, third in the high jump, fourth in the 100 meter high hurdles, and fifth in the triple jump. That is a total of eight events at a national meet, almost unheard of. She was a track and field team captain and was instrumental in part of both teams winning the team national championship. And in 2002, the women won by 84 points. Once again, almost unheard of at track and field national championships. That same year, Nicolette also was the team captain of the women's 2002 basketball team, and she helped lead them to a national junior college championship. She also was named twice as the Defensive Player of the Year for College of DuPage. So the stats, as you can see, are amazing, but the person is even more inspiring. I'm sure Coach Reed, her basketball coach at the College of DuPage, would agree. Nicolette was a coach's dream. Hardworking and dedicated, focused and mentally tough. She outworked most of the other athletes on the track and field team, including all of the men. She was self, a self-starter and knew her abilities and the task at hand and went after her competition with fierceness and determination. Nicolette has continued to apply these same attributes in her life, competing in women's professional basketball in the WABA and the National Women, Women's Basketball Leagues, completing excuse me, competing two times in the American Ninja Warrior Contest and as a stunt performer and model in Hollywood. You may have even seen her performing some of the stunts on shows like This Is Us, Luke Cage, or Chicago Med, to name a few. Always amazing and talented, one of the best athletes in my 35 years of coaching I've ever had the honor to coach, I present Nicolette Wright. Uh, please bear with me as speaking is not my forte. Um, if I was asked to climb up on the roof and jump off or get hit by a vehicle, I'd say let's go, but speaking, that scares me. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you to Coach V. Um, it's really touching to me that out of 35 years of her coaching, um, that I hold a special place in her life and her heart and that she remembers me, so thank you very much. Um, I would also like to say thank you very much to Coach Reed. Um, congratulations on a successful season, or years at the College of DuPage and your recent retirement. Um, coach Reed wasn't just a coach for me. He was also a friend, a confidant. Uh, we had a lot of talks on and off the court. When some of the other teammates were gone home, we'd sit around and talk, just whether it was about basketball or being a team leader or just things in life. So thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. All right, sorry, told you I'm nervous. <laughs> um, um, I would like to um, say also thank you to the College of du uh, DuPage and all the staff that helped me out. Um, I know like every other 18 year old, just fresh out of high school, getting out on your own, that my focus was just on school and academics. Not the case at all. So I wanna thank all of my coaches and all the staff for keeping me accountable um, with my academics as well as my athletics. Um, Coach, Coach V talked about um, all the different events running in a track meet. Um, basketball was great, but I remember that track used to just kick my butt. Practices were fun, but when it would come to a track meet, um, usually we'd have to start with the uh, field events. So I remember going over to triple jump, getting a couple jumps in. Coach V would run over and, hey, you know, it's time for you to go line up for the 200. Okay, did the 200, come back, do the high jump. Okay, yeah, coach, it's time for me to get over there to the line. You know, they're starting the 400. Back and forth, back and forth, event after event. Um, and I remember being just so physically exhausted. Uh, the 400 was usually towards the end of a track meet. And for those that aren't familiar with track and field, the 400 is one time around the whole track, but you are going at basically a sprint. It's the longest minute of your life. I used to call that the devil's event. So I would run the open 400, get about two events of rest, and then it would be time to run the 400 hurdles. 
So I'd have to do the same 400, but now going over hurdles. So by the time all that was over, that's event like number six or seven. I'm just completely exhausted. My legs just want to give out. I just want to sit down and rest. But the last race of every track meet was the four by four. So four girls running 400 meters each around the race. Um, this, was the, uh, this was the event of a track meet. Like the whole track stops, all the audience is watching. I remember all of my, uh, the women's team and the men's team would line up around the inside of the track on the football field and everybody would just cheer. The four by four was the biggest event. It was one of the toughest ones and especially to get four girls that really wanted to get out there and compete and run a 400, they volunteered for that. That was definitely hard. Um, fortunately, I, my years at DuPage, I had some amazing teammates. Um, and no matter who we put together for our different relays, we seemed to always win. We seemed to demolish other teams. So I had incredible teammates that really helped make this such a great experience. Um, one of the most touching moments I remember is running that 400, or the 4x4. Four four. And at the end of the meet, um, everybody's lined up, and you're, you're tired, and you're exhausted. But with everybody cheering for you, you, you see your coach as you're coming around that last corner. Coach is cheering you to keep going, keep going. Your body's like, no, stop, just sit down. But coach is like, you can do it. You know, you're a couple seconds away from your PR, your best time. Get out there, go as hard as you can. And so honestly, between the coach and the teammates and the fans cheering you on for that 4x4 four four at the end of the meets, that's one of the greatest memories I have. And I feel like I used that motivation and that memory of having such a support system there um, later on in sports, whether I was playing basketball at the pro level or um, doing stunts now. When I get tired, I just remember that I have a support system, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, I would like to, again, thank everyone at the College of DuPage, all the administration, all the staff, um, the Hall of Fame committee, committee um, for organizing this and putting this together. It's a true honor. Um, I would like to thank God because I feel that my talents don't come from me, they come from him. They're all, all talents that he, and gifts that he's given me, so thank you to God. Um, I would like to thank my parents, Chris and Al, um, super supportive, and gosh, I don't know, up until that point it was like 18 years of any sport I could get my hands on to, I wanted to try it out. So mom had to drive me and siblings from one sport to another, from one game to another. Um, I think there were stops with McDonald's in between, maybe dinner. Um, but my parents definitely sacrificed so much, so I'm thankful for that and thankful for the athletic genes from both of you guys. That helped. <laughs> um, so um, I do have a quote um, that I feel that really hits home for me, and it says that um, we don't grow old because we stop playing. We stop playing because we grow old. Um, and to me, that really hits home. If I didn't have these experiences that I had at DuPage, um, I don't know that my path would have followed the way it did. Um, I feel like the memories and the team camaraderie and the teamwork that I learned at, during my um, two years at DuPage, I carry that on to what I'm doing now, whether it's through athletics or sports or just even um, a professional environment. So I want to say thank you again to my amazing coaches and to the College of DuPage for this opportunity and so grateful for this honor. Thank you. A two-sport athlete in basketball and tennis, Allie Ittersagan, did not go too far from the Kloss family home to College of DuPage. In her two seasons, she excelled in both sports, winning the doubles national title and finishing runner-up in singles in 99, and then playing an MVP season for the Shaps 2000 National Championship basketball squad. Join me as we now take a look at Allie Ittersagan. Allison Kloss Ittersagan was a two-time All-American guard and led the Chaparrales to the 2000 National Championship, in which she was named the Tourney MVP. A two-time N4C MVP, she received a full-ride scholarship to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where she helped the Panthers to their first NCAA tournament appearance in school history in 2001. Allie played two seasons of tennis at COD and helped her doubles team to a second-place finish in the national championship in 1998 and a second-place team finish in the 1999 Nationals. She is the daughter of former men's basketball head coach, Don Kloss.
Join me in welcoming Hall of Famer Don Kloss, who will present our fourth honoree and daughter, Allie Ittersagan. Well, it certainly is a pleasure for me to introduce my daughter to this Hall of Fame committee, or to this Hall of Fame induction. Um, this really makes it special. Allie was a great athlete, a great student, and the most important thing, she was a great member of our family. And she's carried that on with her family, with Brian and their, and their five kids. And she's a, she and Brian are great parents. They have the discipline and the love and the time and the togetherness that uh, makes them a very special family. You, as you saw, <clears throat> Allie was twice All-American in basketball. That's a hard thing to do and uh, in a team sport like that. And one of the things I remember in that, in the championship year in 2000, in the national championship game, she scored 34 points in that game for them to win the national championship. And I don't know if that record's still there, but it was there for a while. So, you know, and, and she was always a good basketball player. She played a variety of sports. And I've mentioned, you know, that uh, great athlete and all that. She was so competitive. When she stepped on the court or the field or whatever, it was like, I'm going to win. I'm going to give it everything I have, and I'm going to win. And she did it with smarts. She was uh, a very, very smart basketball player because I helped coach her in grade school. And... <clears throat> But she had great instincts. And I remember this story, and I know Allie will remember it too. We're coming home, and she was in fifth grade. We're coming home from a game, and as we often did, we'd talk about the sport. And I said, well, what do you think? And she said, well, Dad, Dad, my, you know, we won and my team was pretty good, but our help side defense was not good today. <laughs> A fifth grader saying that and understanding that, oh, that's so beyond limits, it's incredible. And, uh, but she totally understood that. So she, she knew how to win, was very competitive. I think sometimes people think that she was a very fine offensive player, which she is, but I always thought she was, was great at defense. And if you looked at her and with her friendly smile and attitude and a pretty face like her mom, and just, just her outgoing personality. If you judge that and think you might have an advantage on the court, Allie would have a dagger ready to place in your heart. She was so competitive, and, and that's, that's why she had a lot of success. And, and she went on to Milwaukee, as it mentions here. And Well, actually, I should mention the tennis as well. Um, and it, she won a great deal. She didn't start playing tennis until she was in high school. So she picked that up very nicely and, and won a great deal there, won the national champion in doubles one year, second another. But also in her sophomore year, she took second in the national singles. And I remember watching that game. It was a great game and a great match, and she was right there. And, and uh, we expected her to win, and I know she expected to win, but you know, she was just fiercely competitive, and she's always been like that. I'm hoping her kids are like that, and I, I think they are. Anyway, then Allie left to go to UW-Milwaukee and did very well there. And I want to mention the, the student part. At COD, College of DuPage, Allie finished with a four-point. And when she went to Milwaukee, she finished there with a 3.8. And so she was always a great student, honor roll and all that. And in her, so her senior season at Milwaukee was named the academic athlete of the basketball team and with a degree in kinesiology. And she got uh, hired by the College of DuPage and she worked you know, in basketball and she worked in fitness. She actually was the director of the fitness for the police cadets in early morning. And I just, can you imagine all these young studs walking in and then seeing this, this young chick and thinking, oh, this ought to be easy. 
It was not easy. <laughs> Allie was so hard on them. They were, they were, well, they just had to work very hard to get through. So she's always had that kind of approach to things. And um, I think she's passing it on to her family. And I, you know, she is, you know, the great parent. And, and what's more important than that? Now, I want to end with, I have a story about her when she was two years old. I knew there was something special about Allie. Her mom got in the car. They were going to run an errand. Our two boys, Ben and Casey, and Allie were all in the back. And Peg just left the house and was making a turn. And this was before the seat belts and all of that other stuff. The door flew open, and Allie went flying out and she rolled and this is where I and I wasn't there I just heard the story I, I knew there was something special she got up and was running after the car and yelling for her mother <laughs> and I'll never forget that story and and Peg was very upset about it but Allie says all right what's next where are we going <laughs> and with that story I'd like to present Allie Intersagan. Wow, what an amazing blessing and honor to have you, Dad, um, who has been one of the most influential individuals in my life, introduced me here today. Being a part of this Hall of Fame class is so special, but by far the best part about it is doing this together with you. I also want to thank Jane Batcheff, like everybody has. You've just put so much work into this, and it has been such a special event. And I just am so honored to be selected to receive this prestigious honor. I'm incredibly humbled to be along just amazing athletes and coaches and leaders at COD. College of DuPage, as you guys have, have heard, has always had a special place in my heart. I grew up living in the gym, sleeping in the ball rack, traveling to games with my brothers, my family and just watching my parents build this life that was so awesome together. I loved watching my dad coach, even with that mustache, <laughs> which all the grandkids are like, who is that? <laughs> loved watching him coach, and I just really grew a passion for sports and just everything that they can teach you at a really young age. Um, I remember my dad talking with his teams and his coaches and with my mom at home about setting goals and having determination and uh, discipline and hard work. And I just remember all of the things that he talked about, always having a positive attitude. And I was definitely listening, maybe a few other things, but I was always listening to his every word growing up, whether he knew it or not. As he said before, he was my very first basketball coach, and the motto for our team and all of his teams and all of his camps, like he said, was work hard and play fair and serve God. And those simple but powerful words definitely shaped the athlete that I was and the woman that I am today. Going to COD and just being part of the COD family uh, was just a true gift in my life. Now, I, I didn't maybe know it at the time, but I just look back and even being there, it was, it was really a gift. I was, um, I was able to be alongside my parents. I was, along, I was by my husband, Brian, who was at Wheaton College at the time, so we were close. And um, I was just alongside coaches like Dr. Reed and Beth Mitchell and Dave Webster and Gail Tate, who just really were, were on my side and really dedicated in helping me grow as a student and as an athlete. Um, I'd first like to thank Dr. Reed, who is here today. Uh, I can't tell you enough what an honor it was to play for you. You were such an awesome coach. You believed in me so much. You instilled such confidence in me that I really, truly feel allowed me to succeed at COD and then at the next level. So I just thank you so much. I love the faith that we share and just the memories that were built playing for you. But one quick story. <laughs> You're not getting up that easy. We were in the national championship game, and we were up by 10. It was my sophomore year. You know what's coming. 
and we were up by 10 with 10 seconds. And Dr. Reed is in the huddle and coaching us up and writing on his clipboard like he always did. And I looked at him and I said, Coach, nobody is listening to you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had never talked to him like that before. You should have seen the look on his face. But it really did show the special relationship and connection that we had. Uh, to mom, you have been just the most loving, supportive, faithful mother that a daughter could ever dream about. Um, you were definitely the selfless caretaker of our family. You were always so positive with me, so loving with me, and just thank you for being such a wonderful example of a mom and a wife and such a great role model. And to dad, you've been one of the most loving and devoted and just steady individuals in my life. I am so thankful for all the fun memories at COD as a kid and then going there and the talks in your office. I'd stop by every other day or every other class. I'd be in his office talking and just, it was so fun to go back to back women's games and men's games and, and having him there. Um, I'm just so thankful for that, but I'm more thankful for the man that you are each and every day. And um, I just love and respect you so much. As a, a, as, a fra as a father and as a husband and um, a coach and a friend. And then to Brian, my husband who's here 15 years and as I've heard, five kids later, uh, thank you for all your love and your support and your enthusiasm for me and my athletic career because we were, we were together when I was at, in high school in COD and University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. So thank you for your encouragement and support and then now as a wife and as a mom. And then to my kids who are here, to Brooke and to Anna and Blake who's videoing me and Chase and Luke, I hope you guys just learned about the amazing love and support that is all around you. Um, I pray that you guys have just a positive outlook on life, that you love Jesus, and may the same words that I learned from Papa mold and just shape who you are. And let's work hard, play fair, and serve God. Thank you. Tomorrow marks 29 years ago to the day when I last saw Tom Puxtis. Tommy was a senior at the University of Florida, competing in the Javelin at the 1990 NCAA Championships in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, I was completing my one-year internship in the Gator Sports Information Office. My responsibilities were men's track and field, and I got to know and work with Tom pretty much on a, on a daily basis. And uh, one of the absolute joys of my career was working with track and field news and helping place a photo of Tom after he set the NCAA U.S. collegiate record. And I might add, it's a record that remains to this day uh, that was held at Percy Beard Track in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, while at COD, uh, Tom was the 1987 national champion and the following year set the national junior college record. It remains today. And please join me now as we take a look at two-time Olympian Tom Puxtis. Tom Puxtis competed in the Javelin for the Chaparrales and later became the United States top thrower for nearly a decade. A member of the 1992 and 1996 U.S. Olympic teams, Puxtis was a six-time United States champion and was ranked number one in his sport seven times by the U.S. Track and Field News. While at COD, he was the 1987 NJCAA national champion and national junior college record holder, and later became a two-time All-American at the University of Florida. He established the U.S. collegiate record in 1990 and remains the national junior college season record holder with a throw of 248 feet 5 inches in 1988. He was inducted into the National Junior College Track and Field Hall of Fame in 1997. Please join me in welcoming former track and field coach legend Ron Otteson, who will introduce our fifth honoree tonight, Tom Puxtis. Oh, it's my honor. It's my honor to introduce 
the best athlete I've ever had, period. And we had some pretty good ones. And uh, you'll be hearing from them in years to come. Uh, it's my honor to, to introduce Tom into the first Hall of Fame. Not only is he a superior athlete, but an outstanding human being. And that's, that's even more important, right? His accomplishments. First of all, he got, he got married in 205 to Ann. That's, a, that's his biggest accomplishment to date. Uh, <laughs> College of the Page Juco champion, uh, junior college champion. He threw 225-1 his first meet. And then the second time he won a national champion, it was 248-5. And that record, that national record for junior college division one still stands to this day. He then went to the University of Florida where it was a lot warmer and uh, so holds a school record, an Amer American collegiate record at 273-3. And, and uh, then his big accomplishment at that time uh, was his, his professional career, which has really blossomed. He's six times US champion Want me to repeat that? Six-time U.S. champion. Uh, he has six U.S. records set. First one in uh, 93, 281 feet, two feet, uh, 281 two and two inches. And the last one in 97, 285, 10. His world ranking has always been in the top five in the world. Um, he was an Olympiad in 92 and 96 and has competed in 100, over 180 international competitions. He's uh, now, his accomplishments are national coordinator for men's throws in the U.S. He was a U.S. Olympic team coach for throws at the London Olympics, which is quite a thrill, I think. Uh, He's also the father of three boys, um, and a, currently residing in Alabama. May I introduce uh, my hero, Tommy Puxtis. Uh, I arrived at COD a little bit into my freshman year of college. Came from Eastern Illinois University, which I thought was going to be a great fit. Didn't really work out. Uh, I was in search of some place that would welcome me, maybe encourage me, give me some direction. I found the right place at the right time. I came in in January, totally balanced. I had a chip on both shoulders, a little reckless, but I found the right people to support me in the right school to find my ways. One of my greatest regrets in life is poor grades in high school didn't grasp the idea that you have to study and prepare well for your future. I thought I should just have fun, do the best I could. Wasn't a bad guy, just didn't get it. Had COD, was about an hour away from the house. Had a chance to figure it out by staying on campus and actually doing schoolwork. After lunch, I would just spend my time in a wonderful library uh, in the study areas we had at school. Thought the Athletic building was extraordinary. Actually, when I first stepped foot on campus, I thought I was in like a set of Battlestar Galactica or something like that. It's a great school, great place. I wasn't used to seeing something so nice. So I really appreciated that. So I studied. And then I met this coach, Coach Addison, and managed to do, you know, I was ready to train. I was gung-ho. You didn't have to worry about me working hard. Uh, you had to probably worry about me breaking something, throwing through a window. Uh, often, actually, I'm asked, how did I learn how to throw? Um, well, I think you can understand if I would take this time to apologize to all the CTA bus drivers of Chicago for hitting their buses with snowballs when I was about five years old. So, sorry about that. I was so good at throwing that I could actually pick out the window I wanted to hit. But that's another story. It's, it's true. Yeah. 
So Coach Addison, what did he mean to me? And what did COD mean to me? So how did it work out for me? Grades were rough in high school, COD, grades came up. I made the dean's list. And I'm not used to making the dean's list with the academic side. I was used to making the dean's list, you know, the other one that no one wants to brag about. I was great at that list in high school. Actually, I have the world record for longest detention in elementary school history. <laughs> You know, uh, things happen in life. So uh, I did pretty well as a freshman at COD. Uh, won the Athlete of the Year. He saw a little glimpse of it. And the most impactful thing that happened to me athletically at COD was Coach Addison talked about my temperament. And he mentioned something about being composed. And if I were to be able to compose myself and channel those emotions, that I would be able to challenge the best guys in the world. And that's pretty much when I st stared in a mirror and I realized that uh, success is on, me, on my terms. It's up to me. Don't blame anybody else. Don't ask for anybody else to expect to hand it to you. It was all up to the guy you see in the mirror. So, Coach, thanks for that. I don't think you realize that. But that's actually probably the most uh, important impact I've had in my life was to have someone who I looked up to, I found authoritative, Coach was a great leader. Goes without saying, you know he's going to be here next year. We know I'm coming back, so I'll be back. Hopefully, uh, I get the chance to hang out again with you. He just said, uh, he always gave me encouragement where manage your emotions, control yourself. And I actually became comfortable competing internationally, flying all over the world with no sleep, nothing. It became easy for me because I could only control what was in front of me and what I, can, what I did. And those are the characteristics that you need to have in order to be competitive and internationally capable. And it really came from what Coach said in about two sentences in an article in the Chaparral in the late spring of uh, 1987. So like I said before, COD worked out for me academically. It worked out for me athletically. It paved the way for me to be uh, the person I am today. Uh, I'm enjoying my life as a coach. I'm, my memories of sports are uh, personal now. I often look back and I remember how important the, or how I enjoyed the feelings, the sensations, the sounds, the colors, and the people I met. I've had some dark times. Uh, I just kind of lock those away unless I need to call upon those to teach somebody maybe going on that same path. So I'm grateful to the Hall of Fame for recognizing my past. Uh, it's been a long time. It's, it's kind of history now, but I welcome that recognition. So thanks very much, Jane. I know when you first asked me, I balked at coming, and now I can't understand how I would have missed this for the world. So uh, I had a couple of things to say, but I don't want to take too much time. I'll just say that Coach Addison and COD, huge impact. Thanks very much for being here tonight, hanging out for so long. Hang in there. There's probably still some caffeinated coffee available. And if not, you can just steal some energy from me because I still have some. So <laughs> thanks very much. Our sixth and final Hall of Famer. Who knew when Paul Spicer enrolled at College of DePage in the fall of 94 that he would become a Super Bowl champion? His skills and talents led him to an All-American season with the Chaps in which his teams, his two teams, never lost a game. And after a stalwart career at Saginaw Valley State, he went on to play 11 seasons in the National Football League. And football remains a part of Paul's life. And that, here now is a look at Paul Spicer. Paul Spicer played defensive end for 11 seasons in the National Football League with the Detroit Lions, Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Super Bowl 44 champion New Orleans Saints. He also spent time with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the Canadian Football League and the Frankfurt Galaxy of NFL Europe. While at COD, he was an All-American his sophomore season and helped lead the Chaparrales to 24 consecutive victories. He then played at Saginaw Valley State, where he was named Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference MVP in 1998 and led the conference in sacks. 
After his playing career, Spicer spent four seasons as an assistant defensive line coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and recently became the defensive line coach at the University of South Florida. Please join me in welcoming Sharifa Spicer, who will introduce her husband and our sixth and final honoree this evening, Paul Spicer. Good evening, everyone. Yes, my name is Sharifa Spicer, and this has been such a wonderful experience just to be a part of um, this event. I think that not one detail has not been um, seen or noticed by our family, and we cannot extend our gratitude from the welcoming basket to such a warm welcome to um, and from some of the coaches here and some of the staff. So from our family, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for such a wonderful and warm welcome. Um, it's at this time I have the privilege and the honor of introducing my best friend. And before we get into that, I would first like to ask each of you to just take a moment to think back on those years when you were 18, 19, 20 and 21 years old. Now I know for some of us that's a long time back, but I'm asking you just to think back at that time. And for many of us, those were our college years. And those college years mark some really wonderful memories in our lives. Amazing friendships and yes, like this evening, some really astounding accomplishments. And perhaps like many of you, those were also the times of our lives where we made some good decisions and some poor decisions and we made some um, not so good decisions. And I'll say that also, there was uh, in that time of life, it, for many of us, our future was probably a bit foggy. We didn't know what we were gonna do in our lives. And we, when making not the right choices, we heavily relied on our parents at that time in our lives. And as my mom used to say, you know, that was a time in your life where you did not have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. <laughs> but I would also say that, and surely for most of us, that was a time period in our life where we didn't have the proper mindset per se, and we didn't have the maturity to understand that at some time in our life, we were going to grow up and be leaders. We were gonna impact the lives of other people and that we were gonna have families of our own that we would have to share strong stories with. But whatever your dreams were at that time, Paul had four attributes and still maintains four attributes that led him to be the leader that he is today. First of which is vision. I know that some of the attributes that I'm gonna mention, many of our presenters did discuss and give an overview. But when we talk about vision particularly, Vision is your direction. Vision is how you're gonna get there. And when you think about an opponent, when you walk on either the field or the court, the clay or even the greens, vision, okay, is the difference between those two opponents and who's gonna win. When we talk about vision, it is your direction, it is the processes, it's the strategies that you use to make you the winner over your opponent. The second attribute that you must have is that of passion. Passion is not something that you can learn in a playbook. Passion is not something that your coach can teach you on the sidelines. But passion is something that is innately within your heart. It is in your spirit. It is something that drives a part of love in your heart to make you and to allow you to become successful. The third attribute is support. None of us got to where we are and have received the accomplishments that we've received this evening and in our lives without the support either of that of our family, our spouses, our friends, our coaches, and even that of God. And fourth and finally, we talk about spiritual gifts. Everyone in this room, with my mighty high and my God that I, claim, that I call upon, has blessed us all with spiritual gifts. It is our responsibility to understand and to tap into those spiritual gifts to know how to use them to impact the lives of others, our families, and ourselves. I would say to you that tonight, Paul Spicer has done and has utilized all four of those things, his vision, his passion, support, and his spiritual gifts.
I'd like to, if you don't mind, regress for one moment. And I'm gonna ask you now to rewind back to 2007. And for 2007, I may be using some profanity for you all, but that was a time in my life where I could not absolutely stand the sport of football. As a matter of fact, I hated football, being honest. I couldn't match colors with teams. I couldn't match teams with cities. And if you paid me, I could not tell you or even recite six NFL teams. But in 2007, I also ran across a phenomenal defensive player who played for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he absolutely changed my outlook on football and the way that I thought and understood about the game of football. When you marry someone, ultimately you do marry their career. And there were many nights that I complained about the time and the dedication that he lent towards his career, but it made Paul the man that he is today. He has a forever grind about him, a passion, a grit, as, I've been as I was told this evening by one of his coaches, that he continues to demonstrate throughout today. And as I look back, I have to be honest to say, too, I would probably give anything for that NFL player schedule <laughs> in comparison to the hectic and demanding schedule that is afforded a NFL coach now, defensive line coach at the University of South Florida. I have seen Paul on and off the field. I have seen and bared witness to his hard work and dedication that he has lent towards his career and also that of pursuing his educational degree. I have seen, seen him actively participate and volunteer in the community to strengthen the lives of families and children who live in disadvantaged communities. Paul has been acknowledged for his philanthropic efforts in the community. And most noteworthy, his nonprofit engagement and has again impacted the lives of children who are residing in disadvantaged communities. And for that, and all of which I have not mentioned, leads me to believe that my best friend is a leader. Ladies and gentlemen, it's at this time that I would introduce you to a man who has discovered his spiritual gifts, that of has, and a man who has passion, vision, and support, a man who gives of, of himself freely, and a man who understands the word hard work and work ethic. For you this evening, I introduce my husband, my best friend, and my teammate, Paul Spicer. First and foremost, um, and I know some of my honorees that came up here, you know, mentioned God. And I'm, I'm a firm believer without God, we're nothing. We have nothing, we are nothing. Without God, I wouldn't be standing, standing before you today. And I'm a firm believer, he leads my life, he leads my family and my household. And I am so thankful that my wife is here with me today and she gave you guys an a insight into uh, our life and my life and it really started for me right here, right at COD. It really did many years ago and First and foremost, I just want to thank my family. Uh, my kids are not here with me. I have five beautiful children, um, four adult children. You know, I started kind of early, but um, they're all doing great. Two of my sons um, in the military. My, my youngest son, Paul Jr., just left to Germany last weekend, graduated out of Fort Gordon. So I'm proud to say, you know, as a dad and Anybody here that's been in the military, have family in the military, you know, um, my grandfather was the only one I knew prior to now my two sons that are in the military, and my grandfather was in the Army for 27 years. And um, I can't be proud of those guys. I can't be more proud of my sons. But um, I have two daughters, um, my oldest daughter, Asha, my daughter, Laura, and my little six-year-old that's at the, back at home right now with her friends just having fun. Not, not, the, not, not a care in the world right now, but uh, Amira, I want to thank all them, and my mom. Um, 
may God rest her soul. Um, when Coach Mack, who was here today, and came and got me out of Indianapolis, Indiana. You know, I lived in the city, grew up, not a, hot, not, a, not a whole lot, didn't have a whole lot, and didn't really understand what education was all about. I, I really didn't. And I didn't, I didn't know that you needed to have grades and test scores and all the things that I talk about to young men today that I recruit. And I was just up here last weekend at Gurney recruiting a young man out of Warren Township. And I stopped by COD. Oh my goodness! I mean, that place looked like a. He thought somebody said Bat Star Star uh, Galactia. Man, that place looks unbelievable now. I didn't even recognize it. Walked in, and I was astonished of what seal deals would become. But I was astonished all the way back in 1994 when I when I took a visit, how great the facilities were. They were better than Saginaw Valley State University when I went to Saginaw, you know. But um, but anyway. I got to thank Coach Bob McDougal. Coach Bob McDougal is here today, and like I said, he came down to Indianapolis. I met him, and I just felt, you know, a warmth from him coming from where I come from. You know what? You don't trust a whole lot of, unfortunately, white people. It's just what it was. But you know what? He sat right there in front of me, and I just felt the warmth from him, and I just felt what he was saying was real. And I decided to come up here to COD. And when I came up to COD, Coach Roman, Coach Foster was here, a lot of the coaches that was on that staff, the administrators, my best friend, Sean Overrocker, and hit my godson Knox over there. I met Sean when I got up here. And we just became, as Coach Claus talked about, being a fist. For those two years, we were double fisted. And that's why we didn't lose a game. We were 24-0. You know, as great as a coach as Coach Mack is, and Coach, you got my nomination, man, because you, you deserve this. You deserve it before I do. But you know what? I'm here, so I'll beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a one-up on Coach Mack. But, uh, but anyway, as I, as, I move, as I move on, I got to thank all my teammates. And I know Rock is the only one here, you know, Trust and believe it, they were all here. I don't think this place will last. But uh, I got to thank all my teammates, because I wouldn't be up here without, without those guys. We all talked about the support. And my teammates supported me as I supported them. And I treated my teammates, not only just here in, in College of the Page, but when I went on to Saginaw, when I went on to Seattle, it didn't show Seattle. I was only there for a cup of coffee and a sandwich. But I went on to Canada. As it showed, I went on in the World League as we had Jacksonville for nine years and then went on to, to the um, New Orleans Saints where I won Super Bowl 44, beat Indianapolis Colts. Probably one of the greatest highlights of my life and my professional career. Um, as I did all that, you know, I just felt like looking back where it all started from. It started right here at COD. It started right here at COD. My time at COD afforded me to build long-lasting friendships. As you can see, my best friend, Sean O'Rocker, is sitting here today. Guys that I can call brothers, and we remain friends for over 20 years. He's not the only one. I, I mean, I can name Aaron Hamilton, Max Shedd, a bunch of other guys. I know you guys don't know who I'm talking about, but these are guys that walk through those same halls at COD, and we're friends today. None of us look like the same, you know. You know, we got a little extra pounds here and there, but you know what? We, we still friends today, and that's that brotherly love that we learned when we came together as a team. Since, since leaving DePage, my football career really took off. I was All-American, as you heard, defensive end for Saginaw Valley State University in Saginaw, Michigan. Yes, I went to Division II. Usually today you hear about kids going to junior colleges and they transition to, you know, the big universities. It didn't work. It didn't happen for me. And you know what? That's OK. And I tell kids today that you ain't got to go to Florida or Florida State or Michigan or you know, Wisconsin or Indiana to feel like you're you going to make it. Because that's what a lot of these kids today, unfortunately, feel like they got to go to that school. I said, it doesn't matter. Education is, you can get a good education in a lot of different universities here in the United States. And I got my education, you know what, at University of Phoenix. Because after an 11-year career, I had to, I turned around and went right back to school because I promised my mom I was going to graduate college. 
And unfortunately, thank you. You know, I promised my mom I was going to graduate. And as soon as I got my, my career was over, I went right back to school and got my, I got my business degree in business management. I got my BA in business management from the University of Phoenix. And I was excited because I got a chance to walk up on that stage, walk across that stage, receive my degree. My children were there. My wife was there. And to show them that one thing about me, I'm never going to quit. And my, my, allowed my kids to see that. They saw their dad. They saw the nights when I was up at 2 or 3 in the morning on that computer making sure I, I finished. When I was at work, I was coaching with the Jacksonville Jaguars at the time. And the coaches would be laughing at me, man, why are you yawning? What's, are you all right? You need some coffee? Man, I don't drink coffee. I take Red Bull, but I don't drink coffee. <laughs> but they, were, they just didn't understand. And then they saw, they saw on Facebook, you know, we got the social media age now. We didn't have that back here when we were COD, thank God. <laughs> but um, they saw, and, they, and they, was, they was like, man, we didn't know. But that's, that's, that's how I am. I'm just a regular guy. I'm no superstar. I'm just a regular guy. If anybody know me, and, you know, Rock will tell you, I'm just a regular dude. My whole career in Jacksonville, you know, and, and I'm, I'm out and about, and people recognize me. Because, yes, I had radio shows, TV shows, and things of that nature. People come up to me, and I talk to anybody. Because I tell people in a minute, I don't care if you got a PhD or a GED, I'm going to treat you all the same. And I want you to treat me the same way. I tell my players, man, we wake up in the morning, we all put our pants on the same way, one leg at a time. So I'm no different than you. Just because my background says some things, that don't make me better than you. It just says I done did some things. So as I go through this, I wanted to share some things with you guys. A lot of people don't know about me. The things you can't Wikipedia, you know, you can't do that. But for me, growing up in a single parent household, and as hard as it is, my mother had five kids. And if you ask Coach Mack or Coach Foster, um, my wife, you ask anybody that coached me, they would tell you how I'm a hard worker. And I learned that through my mother. My mother raised five kids, had multiple jobs, and my first job, I detasseled corn in the fields of Indiana at the age of 15. Got up at 5 o'clock in the morning, caught a bus, rode about 30 minutes outside of, Indianapolis in the, outside of Indianapolis, and I ran up and down those fields all day until about 1, p, 1, about 1 p.m. That was my first job. Ain't too many kids getting up in the morning doing that today. Hardly any. I, would, I, don't, I don't think any of them would. But that was my first job. And that, was, that, that really put me on that path to understand hard work. My second job, I worked from 7 to 7 in the summer, and I worked from 7 to 1 during school at a fruit and vegetable produce factory. And I had to make, we had to make sure my job was go around with a cart, a wooden-like dolly shaped in a V. And we had to, we had to fill up every truck in, there, in the back parking lot before we were done. And that, that, was, that was my job. I went through coolers, and I had to, I had to uh, rubber band cilantro. I, I did it all. I mean, that, that was my job. Learning hard work. Didn't give up. Didn't give up. That's what I tell my players today. Keep pushing. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. But again, as I said, growing up in a single parent household, as I watched my mother, I learned in that time the similar work ethic that I started with my first job, as I just mentioned with Detox and Corn. And that, personally, allowed me to earn the roster spot in the NFL. Because coming out, I was an undrafted free agent. I was 235 pounds. And at defensive end, it's not very big, especially back then in the 90s when the running back was a little more valuable back then and people ran the ball a lot more. And I, like I told you, I went to Seattle. I was there for a cup of coffee and a sandwich. I wasn't there very long. But again, I didn't allow being cut dictate where I'm going to go. I knew when I left Seattle, I could play in the NFL. I knew, right? In mind, heart, I just knew I could play in the NFL. So I went on, went to Canada. It's a little different. Never played with 12 men on the field. 
Never played, never had, in Canada, the rules are you got to line a yard off the ball as a defensive line. You know, some different things I had to learn, but I made it work. And then Bobby Ross brought me down to Detroit, and I made the team. And I made the team just perseverance, grit, going in every day. When we start spring training, first guy in, last guy to leave, and they saw something in me. I was gonna, never going to quit. And again, some more adversity. Got cut again. That's okay. Somebody else going to got opportunity again. God blessed me to go down to, to Jacksonville and, wow, nine years with one team. I, did, I mean, at, at that point, I was like, I thought I had a pretty good career for an undrafted 235-pound defensive end at Saginaw Valley State University. Didn't know nothing. So I go to, I go to New Orleans. By the way, that's the place you visit. You don't live. I go to New Orleans, <laughs> and I'm not joking. I go to New Orleans, and in one year, to be able to cap off a career as a Super Bowl champion, I mean, that's something I, I will just cherish to the day I die. You know, to be able to go through everything I went through, to be able to finish my career as a Super Bowl champion, to be etched in stone like that, 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 that's an accomplishment that, you know, I want everybody to be able to get opportunity to feel. It feels almost good as, as all of you in here to have children. It, it almost feels good as when you see your firstborn. It feels almost as good as that. I said it feels almost. I didn't say it was. It was. I just almost. Almost. All the guys in here understand what I'm talking about. All the guys in here understand. It's a God thing. It's a God thing. <laughs> but anyway, I learned a lot over the years. But the one thing I truly learned is that learning never stops. It never stops. Every day, we can learn to get better. Every day that God gives us, he wakes us up in the morning. People always ask me, how you doing? I'm doing great. I woke up this morning. Everything else is downhill. I say it all the time. I say it all the time. But as I said, I learned how to be a better Christian, a better man, better father, and a friend. I'm not perfect. I made my fair share of mistakes along the way. But as long as I learn, I know that, well, I messed my own self up here. But as long as I learn from them, as long as I learn from them, I know that I'll be, you know, we all can be better. Thank you, Ms. Jane. I really appreciate it you calling me. I did talk to Greg before he unfortunately left, and I appreciate Coach Foster, you know, nominating me for this. I feel kind of like, man, I'm the last to go. I ain't win no national championship. I'm like, you know what, Coach Mac? What's you know? I mean, y'all got me up here and all. I mean, Nicolette and I mean. Claus, man, y'all guys got national championships up here. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. But you know what? I mean, you guys, I mean, true COD champions. I had the chance to, you know, walk through those halls. But you guys are what makes COD great. And my hat goes off everyone who stepped up here today. You know, Olympic champion. You got, you know, coach went over 700 plus games. That's, that's unreal. We got a, a young lady that came in here and that many sports in track. I mean, that many events in track. I mean, that's unheard of. That's unheard of. Those are unheard of feet. And I get up here and talk about some football. That's all I did. I mean, you got tennis and basketball champion. I mean, I got a Midwest Bowl. We, we, we won the Midwest Bowl game, yes? <laughs> I mean, so yeah, like I said, my hat goes off to you guys, really. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by, by this opportunity to be a part of this class, this inaugural class, or really I am, because to be around true champions, and that's what you guys are. I mean, I mean, Claus, your daughter has five children, and she looked like she ain't had one. <laughs> that, that's an accomplishment. That, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, my wife's a, my wife's a tennis player and, I, and I've been out there 
I know how you feel, man. I know how you feel. <laughs> I know how you feel. But, um, but again, thank you all to the administration, president, a new president coming in. You know, it's a great school. And from what I saw last weekend when I visited and I, and I got an opportunity to walk through there, I saw a little bit of semblance of what I remember, but it, it was unreal. If, you, if, if anybody that's up here today that's, you know, Tom, if, if you haven't had a chance to get by there to see that, that new, the new facility, it's unreal. Nicolette, if you get an opportunity to go by there, the gym is kind of still the same, but that building is unreal. I mean, it truly is to see what this community, this administration, and the people that put the heart, the sweat, the blood, the tears into that place, make it what it is. I know Coach Foster do, I know Coach Mack did when he was here for all those years. And my hat goes off to you guys. Thank you for having me and my family here. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of this first inaugural Hall of Fame. It's time to go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give our six Hall of Famers a final round of applause tonight. And once again, congratulations to Don, Harold, Nicolette, Allie, Tom, and Paul.